So hello everybody. Hello. I'm Davine Dial. I'm the general manager of WPVM in Asheville, North Carolina, one of the oldest uh, community radio stations uh, that has gone through a lot of iterations. Was silent for almost five years. I got involved with the station in 2014 and became manager in 2015. And today we're uh, going to be sharing with you our uh, experiences using social media to help increase awareness of your brand, to help increase awareness in the community of important uh, functions in the community, uh, whether they be political forums or concerts or events that, are, uh, that your guests are coming on to the station to uh, talk about. So uh, we can use the live streaming to social media to our advantage, uh, like you actually have something like a little mini TV station. So uh, why Facebook? For us, uh, and your mileage may vary, but there are several different um, social uh, or media streaming um, entities, Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram. Um, for us, we learn the most and we get the most reach and um, engagement when we go live to Facebook. And uh, then once we're live on Facebook, we have a bunch of, uh, an awful lot of uh, information that using Facebook's algorithms and stats tell us about how we're doing. So, um, as I said, it's currently the most effective for our purposes. Laganzi is helping us. Laganzi. Hey. Hello. And we are also live streaming this now. I'm using my iPad, and I've got a little mic hooked up here that captures the audio and so afterwards if you want to see for yourself how this sounds, how it looks using the equipment that we're using today to give you an idea of what the quality is. Do you guys think iPhones are better for this? Or my Apple products period? Um, uh, well, I'm not an Android user so I haven't had a chance to compare. Phone. What I'm doing is giving you an uh, idea of how it works using okay. this nifty little camera and trust me I've been live streaming since 2007 or 8 and you're always going to want to get better equipment and you're always going to want to get the best that's the latest that's come out so I'm live streaming to my WPVM YouTube channel and um, uh, if anyone wants to go view this video afterwards if you just let me know I'll send you the link. So, as I said, currently Facebook is the most effective for our purposes. And um, those reasons are uh, the responses that we've gotten on Facebook, others like Instagram and Twitter are mineral, minimal, but your mileage can vary. It's best for targeting. Never before in our ad world have we been able to directly target who we know our people are and with Facebook you're able to as you build your fan base uh, you're able to target the subject or the video that you're putting out there directly to your people and their friends that's very important and so it's it's in the past when you were trying to get your brand out or your ad out to the community, it was a shotgun effect. Whereas now, using social media, you, ha you have a very targeted way of getting to your people who you know are gonna be interested in what you're doing. And so, uh, on social media, using Facebook, there's excellent data collection that you can do to tell you what, what shows that you're putting out there on live Facebook are, popular, what ones are getting the most uh, reaction, 
uh, two of the important terms in using social media are reach and engagement. So if you look that up, uh, social media on the magic Google, reach plus engagement, you'll see what you're trying to do with your social media program. Would you be able to give a quick definition of reach? Because it's always puzzled me. Reach is how many, how many uh, eyes that particular post went in front of on right. their social went media, in front of, like, on, their nose, the on their news feed. Right. Right, which is separate from whether the person actually used their eyes to see it, but it was all for yeah, uh, and yeah. I mean, you know, you can once you get into the video, you can um, see how many people watched saw it for three three seconds, or how many minutes they watched the whole video. So uh, Facebook tells you that in the in the stats. Yeah. So engagement is the other part of that where uh, you, you want to put up posts that in, uh, get people to either like it, share it comment on it, and uh, what we have found in the beginning whenever I started the social media program, I was only putting up good news and positive things. But then, one day, I put up something that was very controversial happening in the community, and the engagement just blossomed. <laughs> so, I learned from that that I was being too conservative with what I was putting up there. And so one of our biggest and most uh, impressive uh, amounts of engagement came when uh, we, have, we have an old drainage system in Asheville that was built in the 1890s, made out of clay. And we have a lot of failure in the community for sewage and water drainage. And a 40-foot sinkhole happened <laughs> right by a big shopping center that everybody shops at and it was big enough to swallow a ca several cars, and that got a huge amount of attention and engagement because people were really interested in what was going on. Okay, so uh, you wanna get more followers. So the idea using social media is to get more followers, to increase the awareness of your brand in the community. So in our case, uh, uh, we have two other low power FM stations in the community, so we want to make sure that they're not confused that WPVM is Asheville FM or it's the other station. So I'm constantly putting our logo and the, the term WPVM and Asheville out there using social media. So uh, the more followers you have as you, as you uh, develop your followers on Facebook, uh, the more action you're going, going to get. And Facebook is still emphasizing live video, so take advantage of the hype that Facebook is putting out there. They also favor something video native going straight to Facebook instead of you, as I told you earlier, I'm, I'm live streaming this to uh, YouTube. If I take that file and put it up there, it's going to get a third of the action that Facebook is going to give it than if it's going straight live to Facebook. So that Facebook wants to um, promote video going straight to them. So on this video, in the lower part here, we don't have a cursor here, but where it says 7, 18, 19, you see uh, on, on that week of 7, 18, 19, we reached um, 9,600 uh, people and got 5,200 engagements. So that's stats that uh, Facebook will tell you every week. And then on August 2nd, we got, we reached 7,000 people and we had uh, 2,600 engagements. Were any of those promoted, or was that simply by doing the Facebook? I think that's that was just doing Facebook, and part of that that big one was, that was the sinkhole. <laughs> the reason that I'm sharing all of this with you is there's a lot of insights that you can you you can learn uh, using social media, and in the in the upper right hand corner where it says more notifications insights.
publishing tools, you want to click on Insights. That's going to take you to all of the data that Facebook has to share with you and let you know how you're doing. And that's a picture that the photo there you see is we're doing a world of radio exhibit in the station, so that's in our lobby. This is pages that I watch on the left. Other pages, uh, WNCW is the big non-commercial station in the area. They have 38,000 followers. On the week that I took this video, or took this screenshot, they had engagement of 5,000. Down below where WPVM is, we've got a tenth of their followers. We've got 33,400, but we still had 2,000 in engagement. So that means that we're doing okay compared to what w WNCW is doing. And then the other um, uh, pages that I'm watching on the left are people that are sort of relevant in the community. One of them is the other uh, low power FM station in the community. And then on the right, these are the latest, the uh, screenshot on the right is the latest um, Nielsen report. You know, we can't, very few uh, low power FM stations can afford to have Nielsen monitor us. So this is a way of looking at how we compare to the other stations in the community. And so if I look at WWNC, WNCW, up on top on the left, and then I look at it on the right where it stands with um, the Nielsen rating, they're at 4%. Uh, and then if I scroll down on the right to WSFM, that is the other, I don't know how they're doing this because they're a low power station. They're um, at 0 0.7 in Nielsen rating. So we know that we're at least one or two percent of the format in the community based on the statistics that we have from Facebook and comparing them and contrasting them with the, with the uh, percentage of, of uh, activity from the Nielsen report. Um, you've got to pay for the Nielsen, right? Yeah, it's real expensive. Oh, especially that screenshot that shows the other uh, entities on Facebook. How do you access that? Uh, so that what you public? do? So yeah. So what you can do is you go into those insights and you and it says you, oh, what pages do you want to watch? And if you see right up at the top mm. there, yeah. up the upper left says add pages. So you would click on that little link there. And you would add the, uh, you would insert the name of your competition. Uh, so I, yeah, I never realized you could. That's why I'm giving this class. Good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can go see what they're doing. And, and also you can click on every one of those links, WNCW, Mount Express. You can click on those and it'll show you all the top posts that they have. So you can see if they've got a really high rating, if they've got low followers like we do, which is around 3,500, but we still uh, have, are showing high numbers, we can go in there and look and see what are they doing getting those, uh, that engagement happening on their page. Some question, why not WPBM in the Asheville Nielsen listing, or I'm just missing? Uh, because uh, we can't afford to pay for Nielsen to monitor okay. our, our, our listeners. Uh, and Laganzi, Laganzi addressed that, that there is uh, a $600 deal out there. The Radio Research Consortium. So you yeah. want to follow the pages that are relevant to your message or they're, they're your competition. And so here is a screenshot of how we did last year as far as minutes viewed. This is a year's um, graphed. Uh, we got 152,000 minutes viewed and we got 211,000. At least it went in front of their eyes and since what we're trying to do is just raise awareness and plug into the community our brand, 
that is what, that for us, that's good. That's what we want to be doing. And you found that on Facebook? Yeah, that's on, uh, if you go to those insights, you can, you can get, you can dig into there. There is so much information that you can find out about how you're doing and the, and the stats are phenomenal and at this point still it's free. So you can see there's a light blue line, that's how we did last year and then the dark blue line is how we did this year. So are you looking at the audio stream at all? Are you streaming? That is live streaming, that's what we're doing, that's what we're talking about here. So he means, I think he means audio streaming? I mean audio. Well it's audio and video, it's so audio the on the video. This is, this is for, if we have a live, mu if we have a musician coming in, I'm going to show you in a minute, and we, do, we want them to play what they're, what they're talking about, what they're in town for, we live stream that whole show. Or if we have a politician coming in talking about whatever, we live stream that whole show, that oh, our saying, show. When you say live stream, do you mean video? Yes. Okay. So I'm just curious about, I mean, do you generally stream audio? Is that... Available. You could stream audio, but not necessarily to Facebook because Facebook well, and YouTube are, it depends upon the audio that you're streaming. If you're streaming uh, original in audio, you can stream just that audio. Yes. But uh, you That's cannot stream, about. you cannot stream music to, uh, copyrighted music to Facebook or, or YouTube. So this is another screenshot. These are, these are stats telling us the top 10 shows for this time period between, um, I think this is the past six months of the best streaming that we did. And the first one is River Gagarian who uh, runs a percussion festival. And we had 3,400 video or three second shots where people saw it past pass along on their news feed on social media. This is a screenshot of NC Service Radio, which is a total, which is a program that we have and we live stream it each, each uh, month when they come in that deals with uh, support for returning veterans, whether it's Veterans Treatment Court for addiction. Um, uh, it's a whole range of support that happens and, and since we started streaming their uh, program we, we had uh, 33,000 reach and so that tells us that we're getting the word out to those people in the community whether it's the veteran coming back from the war zone or their dependents we're informing them of important services that are available to them in our community. So we don't know who and when it hits the right person at the right time, but we, we're doing our part in helping to tell the story of, of what they're, what's, what's available to them. Now engagement rate, so when you, when, you go to those, um, when you go to those insights, as I said, there's a number of different things that you can learn, uh, and one of them is engagement rate. So Engagement rate is the number of comments, shares, clicks, likes expressed as a percentage of the total of the, po that the post reach. An engagement rate of 1% is good. 0 0.5 to 0 0.99 needs improvement, and anything below 5% also needs improvement. So you can see some of the shows here that we live streamed are up to 8 and 9%, some are at 5%, one of them points 0 0.893 needed improvement. In this screenshot, this was the, I mentioned earlier that the highest, the highest number uh, on that 10 shows that we had a screenshot of, this is the River Gagarian and this is a close up of what the reach was, which was 5,888 people in the community. And our community is 90,000 people. So if we're reaching five or 6,000 people, we're getting about 5% out that we know that, that that video went in front of their eyes. And then again, looking at the insights, you can go see how many people were reached, how many watched, how many liked it, what the engagement was, and why they were engaging in it. 
this is that video. Thank you for the invitation. This guy is David Gans, who does a national uh, show each week on um, Grateful Dead. So this is this is this is the quality of the actual video, and we're running the audio through that our our board there, and I'm going to show you how to do that if you're interested. Yeah, so we use, uh, so I'll get to that. <laughs> the Grateful Dead Hours can. It's a syndicated show and I produce it offline. But the only music that can be heard is like live. He can't start singing a Grateful Dead song. He can if it's not uh, in under under license by any of the major record producers. Okay. Because they're listening. Start, they no, because start playing one. Yeah, he, he he could not start playing one that's on a CD or an MP3 file that has the metadata in there. If he just starts singing it, then the metadata is not there. So okay. their so their copyright police can't pick that up. Yeah. Is there is there, is there a way your your license that you have for broadcasting can be used for? I well I'm I'm still I just got through arguing with. Um, <laughs> Uh, Amazon skill over this because we have sound exchange and we report monthly using um, Spinatron. Spinatron and so I convinced them yes we're we're legitimately licensed to be to have an Alexa skill because we are paying for our license so I have not felt like I wanted to go argue with Facebook about this yet. I figure other people can do that argument. In the meantime, we just won't be streaming any live, uh, any copyrighted material. We said if, if you're recording, recording. If it's, if it's, we if won't it's be not streaming any. Right. Yeah. Recorded uh, copyrighted material. But right. if there's somebody live in the in the studio. That won't have any, any kind of a... Well, there's a copyright of the, of the underlying composition, but that's not sound exchange's jurisdiction. So, no. that's the, the, so the way they're figuring out that you're playing copyrighted material is they've got their algorithms that are picking up the meta, metadata. If, you're just, if you've got a person in there live, like if this guy started playing one of Grateful Dead songs live, that's just going through the video. That there's no metadata involved in that. Does that make sense? Well, the, the sound exchange is only copyrighted performances that they own. In other words, it has to be from a from a record, a live studio performance. It doesn't come under that, but it might come under the PROs. So the way things have changed, the reason that I'm giving this class is that people need to take advantage of the fact that you can increase the aware awareness of your brand and it's gotten much easier to do. This is me in 2013. I've got a big PRX, Sony PRX10 camera there. I've got a computer there. I've got a mixer there. And, uh, and I had uh, mics hooked up to, this was a school board meeting, so I had four mics hooked up to them. Well, now, we are giving you a lesson from WPPM in videotaping equipment and how we have ours hooked up. This is called the Amigo Camera. That's, where is and it? That's that. It is pretty nifty because it uh, can act like two or three cameras at one time. It's got some interesting automation that you can, that you can work with. This is it on a small tripod close to me. And over here is a boost for That's it this. that will hold up to 10 hours. The other advantage of the boost is it will work, hook up to the Ethernet. The Mevo now, without the boost over there, is connected to our Wi Fi setup. And the way you manage 
Your camera is with a device like an iPad or an iPhone. What do we do for our Nevo camera to get good, good quality audio is we have the camera, the iPad, which is going to be controlling the Mevo camera. We have that running into this iRig. This iRig is connected, we turn around here, to our headphone distributor. So what it's doing is it's going, you can see our console desk here, it's going all the way around under the broadcast console, coming all the way around here, and these cables hook it into the headphone. So when, when people are hearing headphone, their headphone audio, that is for quality audio, and we have that connected under our board here. It's very important with video is that you have as good a quality audio as you can possibly muster. So that, as, as I said earlier, that is this little setup, and it's quite a bit different from the big amount of stuff I used to have to tote around because it fits into here, and the iPad, which you either use a phone, a smartphone, or a uh, Apple product. This is an iPad that I'm using now, and but for the purposes here, I'm picking up the audio using this little mic here. Um, and it'll fold up and it'll fit in here. All of the camera stuff will fit in here. And then I don't have to tote around a huge amount of equipment. I am connected to the internet, internet now using this uh, sound card from Verizon. So that means I can go out in the community and live stream a political event. Bernie Sanders comes to town and I want to live stream it to social media or whatever. I have everything that I need to do it. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, when it says it works like two or three cameras, is that because it's picking up sound and kind of moving towards sound? Uh, what it does is, you see this little light here? If you're interested in what these cameras will do, look up Mevo on YouTube and you'll see how you can make it follow movement around the room, okay. find faces in the room, and when people are talking, it's smart enough that it'll go to that, to that face. And you can adjust how quickly it does it uh, on a slider at the bottom of the, uh, where you can configure it. So there's, there's uh, so, and, I'm, and I don't have stock in this company. <laughs> <laughs> this is just one uh, that's available that seems to work really well for us. Right, and I've heard of it. I just, I've never seen anybody use it. Somebody else in, uh, does another show at the station. I'm at, they use it, but I didn't understand how it works. I'm like, how does it, you know, how does it move around? Or how does it work like two or three cameras? So you're saying that it picks up faces. It, so you can <coughs> make it, you can, it's got two options. You can make it just follow faces. So, so when you're setting it up, getting ready to go live, you can set it up, say follow faces. You want everybody in the room sat where they're going to be. Okay. You want to set up your room, and then you and then you configure the Mevo uh, prior to going live to follow faces. You or you can get it to follow faces, and uh, if a musician's coming in, if you want the it to follow the hand movement that they're doing on their <coughs> instrument, they'll follow that. Okay. I was just going to say. You should explain that what it is is a 4K camera. It's and what you're doing is picking out pieces, mm -hmm. sections of that big image, okay. so you can switch back and forth. Okay. And and the, because it's a 4K, the resolution on those is just fine. It, yeah, this and is. I mean, this is it, so. Right now, mm -hmm. Verizon card here. So I'm streaming this to YouTube. So anybody who wants to see the results of what we've just done here. Email me at wpvm103.7 
at gmail.com and I'll send you that link so you can get an idea of what we've done here. Okay. So WPVM.103.7 at gmail.com. <laughs> so, uh, so, so is that camera now picking up like you and then it's it's got a wide there? angle right now. It is picking up um, kind of where that where that uh, column is there. It's picking up from there to there. So it will go to each person who's talking. If yeah, so right now I just I just hit it and I zeroed in on you. Oh, you, you, so you're Yeah, so you can, you, it's got a, it'll work with the touch screen. You can set it up to do it automatically, but you can also touch it and say, well, that's really good. So let, and then I can increase or decrease the size of the window. So right so you now, like, you three people are in, in this video. If you have more people, you might want to do it manually versus... Yes, like yeah, and, you, and really, you know, when someone is doing a show, and they're working their board and they're doing their interview, it really does help to have a second person ha handling the camera, checking the angles, keeping an eye on the audio levels, making sure that you've got audio going in, making sure that audio is not peaking. So what was your question back there? Well, I was, I'm watching it now, you know, on Facebook, and I think I'm watching his camera, and I noticed it did have some pauses. But it, it, it doesn't seem to lose when it comes back. It doesn't lose. Yeah, so we're a little yeah. bit behind on what and that, and that, and you know, yeah, that's that's because it's picking it's it, his phone is adjusting to the bandwidth that his phone is set up to carry. Uh -huh. So I happen to be a tech addict, so I always try to get the most heavy duty phone. The most the sound card the cellular card that will give me the most bandwidth so that I don't have to get out there and worry that I'm going to have gaps and things happening. And just I see this on Amazon these two devices for 350 and then 150 for the other thing so 500 for the pair. Yeah. And it says Android and. Um, Except somebody's got it on eBay right now because we just ordered a backup. For around four something, four something is what it is, and that includes the camera and the boost. So when I bought my first set a couple of years ago, it was close to seven or eight hundred. What, so, what is, tell us about the boost. What it does. So it's ten hours. Uh, battery. Ten hours, but also has an Ethernet connection. So if you're in the studio and you can uh, put hook your Ethernet up to it it gives you a much clearer picture. Much clearer than just taking, doing it over Wi-Fi. So would this like eliminate the need to have a camera person? Because that's what I was thinking about, like you said, it's still good to have someone. If so. you've got a person in there doing a live show who is not, uh, who, who, who on their live show is not uh, uncomfortable handling it themselves, the people that do best with us are you have the show host doing the interview or whatever, and then you have another person just doing those little adjustments like, you know, zoom, zooming in, like I just zoomed in on you right now. But, but not a paid camera person, a volunteer that is helping. <laughs> so other options are smartphone. Laganzi has a, is live streaming using his smartphone right now. You can do Android. You can get these little, he's got this mic set up and it's, it's to a similar iRig that I mentioned in here whenever I showed you how we're hooking ours into the headphone distributor. So it's picking up our headphone quality audio coming off the board. Uh, he's using a interface that is picking up better quality audio than he would just be getting on his phone, which would be kind of tinny and a little hollow. This is another little, great little, this is a road, and it plugs in to my iPad or my phone, and it'll pick up. So if, if we were to go out and I didn't want to haul mics like this, 
and I was close enough to the subject that, or the action, this picks up fairly decent audio. And you call that a what? This is just this is a Rode mic, R O D E. Okay. Oh, so there's different there's different ones. Uh, I just what I do is I start looking for something that will that I feel like will work, and then I read the reviews and order it and try it out. And if I order from Amazon, it doesn't work. I send it back. What search term do I use to find this that you're doing right now on Facebook? Pardon? What search term do I use to find what you're doing right now on Facebook? So and also we're so as I mentioned earlier, I'm streaming this to our Facebook page or to our YouTube page, <coughs> and if you email me at wpvm103.7, I'll send you the link to view this on our YouTube page, so you can see how this equipment works and judge for yourself what you think the quality is. Okay.